This time I'd like to call the City of Twinsburg regular council meeting uh, for June 27th, 2023 to order. Uh, the time is currently 8.05 p.m. We are at the Twinsburg Government Center, Council Chambers. Shannon, would you please call the roll? Mr. Barr? Here. Mrs. Walker? Present. Mr. Fury? Here. Mr. Bellin? Here. Mr. Deeds? Here. Mr. Post? Here. Mrs. Labby? All right, at this time, Mrs. Walker will lead us in uh, the invocation this evening. Father God, you guide and govern everything with order and love. Look upon the assembly of our city leaders and fill them with the spirit of your wisdom. May they always act in accordance with your will and their decisions be for the peace and well-being of all. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're very fortunate to have uh, the young men from Boy Scout Troop 213 here this evening. Uh, if they'd like to bring the colors in and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, come on in, folks. Come on right up here and go from there. Yeah. Color guards, advance. attendance with us this evening so thanks again to uh, Scout uh, Troop 213 for leading us uh, in the pledge this evening um, <clears throat> moving along to uh, the minutes has everyone had a chance to review the minutes of the regular council meeting from June 13th and if so do we have any discussion I'd like to make a I'd like to make a motion to uh, ex, uh, to accept the minutes as submitted is there a second second Right, Mr. Fury made a motion to accept the minutes. Mr. Post seconded. Shannon, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Post? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Deeds? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Our right, approval of the minutes passes to six to zero. That moves us along to awards and presentations. I think I know the answer to this question, but Shannon, do we have any presentations this evening? We do. All <laughs> right. I think this is your show now, Mr. Mayor. Ready? I'm ready. All right. I'm ready. Okay, first I want to call up Logan. All right. Two Logans. Two Logans. Oh no. Okay, Logan. This over here so they can hear us. Okay, it's my honor to present uh, from the Office of the Mayor a proclamation whereas the administration, council, and residents of the city of Twinsburg, Ohio extend congratulations to Logan Wesley Gerstenfeld for his achievement in earning the rank of Eagle Scout. And whereas Logan joined Cub Scouts in October 2009 with Cub Scout Pack Pack 677 at St. Cosmos and Damien Church in Twinsburg, then joined the Boy Scout Troop 213 in October 2014 at Summit Masonic Lodge in Twinsburg, and whereas Logan completed 32 merit badges, 13 of which are required for Eagle Scout, Logan also completed 70.50 hours of total service and 95 total hiking miles and a total of 68 camping nights. Logan completed uh, H96 training course as well as the National Youth Leadership Training and earned multiple awards. And whereas, for his Eagle Scout project, Logan was able to raise funds for his project at Center Valley Park, 
Buttonbush Trace and the challenge of the COVID-19 pandemic. With the help of family and friends, Logan cleared 1.6 miles of trail, added trail markers, constructed and installed six foot bridges and replaced four wildlife information placards. And whereas Logan is a Twinsburg High School senior and a member of the men's soccer team, Logan was accepted to the University of Akron with a major on mechanical engineering. And now, therefore, I, Sam Scafidi, mayor of the city of Twinsburg, express my congratulations to Logan Wesley Gerstenfeld on achieving this prestigious and honorable rank of Eagle Scout. I further congratulate his parents and family, along with friends and fellow scouts, as they gather to commemorate this special occasion. The witness thereof, I have uh, hereunto subscribe my name and cause my official seal to be affixed on this 27th day of June, 2023. Logan, what an accomplishment. Thank you. Thank you so much. You want to say anything? Okay. <laughs> Very good. He said he's good. Congratulations. He said he's good. Uh, no. Logan Kennecott. Come on. <laughs> I know this Logan. All right, Logan. Come on over. Okay. Whereas, this is a proclamation, whereas the administration, council, and residents of the City of Twinsburg, Ohio, extend congratulations to Logan Kennecutt for his achievement in earning the rank of Eagle Scout. And whereas Logan has had several leadership positions in Troop 233 and 213, excluding, including Chaplain's Aide, uh, Assistant Patrol Leader, Patrol Leader, Assistant Patrol Leader, Patrol Leader, and Troop Guide, and eventually earning Eagle Scout on August 30th, 2022. And whereas Logan was awarded the National Outdoor Camping Award and Polar Bear Award as a Boy Scout and Arrow of Light Award as a Cub Scout. He also visited the Navy, Navy ship in Buffalo as a Cub Scout, uh, which as one of his most memorable experiences. And whereas for his Eagle Scout project, Logan built benches and refurbished the Gaga Pit at the Macedonia YMCA. And whereas Logan was named Outstanding Freshman in Band, Most Improved in Cross Country as a Sophomore, Scholarly Athletic, um, Scholarly Athletic every year, as well as his Academic Excellence Award. His high school leadership positions included Marching Band Section Leader, Concert Band Section Leader, and symph Symphonic Band Section Leader, and now, therefore, I, Sam Scafidi, Mayor of the City of Twinsburg, express my congratulations to Logan Kennecott on achieving this <clears throat> prestigious and honorable rank of Eagle Scout. I further congratulate his parents, Dave and Jennifer Kennecott, and grandmother Sharon uh, Sweetlow, along with the family, friends, and fellow Scouts as they gather to commemorate this special occasion. In witness thereof, I have hereunto subscribed my name and caused my official seal to be affixed this 27th day of June, 2023. Logan, again, what a great accomplishment. Thank you. Would you like to say anything? I'm good. Thanks, I'm guys. Good. <laughs> Mayor, Mayor, I'd just like to mention that um, Logan is actually a third generation in his family. His brother was also an Eagle Scout, but his dad was and his grandfather was. Oh, nice. So he's wow. actually third, wow. third generation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, how about John, uh, Rick, Ryan, Marcy? Come up, John. You guys are winding me. You've got a whole lot of uh, <laughs> good awards here. Okay, John. Um, whereas the administration, council, and residents of the city of Twinsburg, Ohio, extend congratulations to John Rigg Ryan Larson for his achievement in earning the rank of Eagle Scout. And whereas John began his scouting career in Lowell, North Carolina, in 2029 with pack number 33, sponsored, sponsored by the Woodlawn Baptist Church. John then joined PAC number 677 in Twinsburg, sponsored by St. Cosmas and Damien Church.
John uh, would earn the Bear and Weeblo before achieving his Arrow of Light on Sunday, February 23, 2014. Whereas John crossed over to Troop Number 213, sponsored by the Summit, Summit Masonic Lodge. Uh, with little time spent in the troop, John believed he found his home. John would be appointed assistant patrol leader of the Holy Holy Cows Patrol. <laughs> by my, I want to make sure I read that right. <laughs> Holy cow! Uh, by Michael Noga in 2016. Uh, commit cementing his place for the next six years of his scouting career. And whereas John's Eagle Scout project was the construction of four, uh, four eight tables and detached benches. The tables and benches are installed at the entrance of the Masonic Lodge and were installed by Eagle Scout Devin Paul. This project allows for scouts and, le and ledge attendees to enjoy the outdoors and whereas John has attended the Twinsburg schools since 2010 and is now a senior at Twinsburg High School. John has been a member of the bowling team for four years, is a member of the marching and concert band playing trombone. He joined the track team his uh, sophomore year, throwing shot and discus for the following three years. He took American Sign Language for three years and has a passion for welding. John plans to attend a trade school after graduation and hopes to start a career at Lincoln Electric. Good company. And now, therefore, I, Sam Scafidi, Mayor of the City of Twinsburg, express, express my congratulations to John Rigg Ryan Larson on achieving this prestigious and honorable rank of Eagle Scout. I further congratulate his parents, Kyle and Colleen Larson, and Sister Elizabeth, along with family, friends, and fellow scouts as they gather to commemorate this special occasion. In witness thereof, I have on to subscribe my name and cause my official seal to be affixed this 27th day of June, 2023. Congratulations. Opportunity to say anything if you'd like. Okay. No, I'm good. <laughs> Oxygen, maybe? Right. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, that's a lot of reading. Uh, okay, Benjamin, I gotta make sure I get this name right. Wisensikowski. Once you get close. Was I close? Okay, come on. I'm gonna give it to you. Okay, come on, Benjamin. Okay, we have another proclamation. Whereas, <clears throat> the administration, council, and residents of the city of Twinsburg, Ohio, extend congratulations to Benjamin Winzakowski for his achievement in earning the rank of Eagle Scout. And whereas, <clears throat> Benjamin joined Cub Scouts in 2013 as a wolf in the Cub Pack 316 in Twinsburg, Ohio. Ben earned several, several belt loops, pins, patches, and awards, as well as his arrow of light. Ben earned a total of 33 merit badges and 14 required for an Eagle Scout. And whereas, Benjamin crossed over to Boy Scout Troop 213, sponsored by the Summit, Summit Masonic Lodge in Twinsburg in May of 2016, under the leadership of Scoutmaster Chip Reed. Ben obtained the rank of Eagle Scout on August 22, 2022, under Scoutmaster Desiree Kleckner. Kleckner, okay. Um, in his years as a scout, Ben held multiple ranks and positions and participated in several special activities. And whereas Benjamin Eagle Scout project was the construction of a 12 by 13 foot brick patio with a seating area on the west side of the Masonic, Summit Masonic Lodge entrance, Around the flagpole, two benches were also added for additional seating. And whereas, Benjamin is a senior at Twinsburg High School and maintains a 3.9 GPA. He has participated in marching and symphonic band all four years, and the symphonic orchestra the past two years. Ben has over 260 hours of community service in multiple Twinsburg organizations. Ben plans to attend college after graduation and pursue a degree in photography and digital arts. And now, therefore, I, Sam Scafidi, Mayor of the City of Twinsburg, express my congratulations to Benjamin Wenzikowski on achieving this prestigious and honorable rank of Eagle Scout. I further congratulate his parents, Jeffrey and Marion Wisenkowski, and brother, Jacob. 
along with the family, friends, and fellow scouts as they gather to commemorate this special occasion. In witness thereof, I have hereunto subscribed my name and caused my official seal to be affixed this 27th day of June, 2023. Benjamin? Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Benjamin. Congratulations. <laughs> Very good. Very good. I am Thomas Simichek. There we go. I got one. When do I get an award? I got one right. We don't have Simichek. We have a road. You're going to need a vacation. Yeah, yeah. Holy smokes. Come on over here. Yeah, come on in a little bit. <laughs> I need to stand by this one. All right, we ready? All right, whereas the administration, council, and residents of the city of Twinsburg, Ohio, extend congratulations to Thomas Simichek for his achievement in earning the rank of Eagle Scout. And whereas <coughs> Thomas joined Cub Scouts as a Tiger in 2008, sponsored through St. Cosmos and Damien Church. Thomas crossed over into Boy Scouts May of 2014 with Troop 2. 23. After several years with Troop 223, he moved on to Troop 213, which is sponsored by the Masonic Temple under Scoutmaster Chip Reed. And whereas Thomas earned 26 merit badges, 13 of which are required by the Eagle Scout rank, um, he was voted into the Order of the Arrow and went through NYLT National Youth Leadership Training and was Karn Master in Camp Man at Camp Manitok. He also uh, held positions of scribe, patrol leader, assistant patrol leader, and assistant senior patrol leader. And whereas for his Eagle Scout project, Thomas procured donations to pay for the tetherball court in Four Square for the YMCA. He saw a need for activities for older children and spoke with the director to implement this. The scouts helped build the courts and set them up for future use. And whereas, Thomas graduated from Twinburg High School in 2021. He was a wrestler since eighth grade. Currently, Thomas attends the University of Akron studying mechanical engineering. He enjoys working on the 1985 Chevy pickup truck that was left to him by his grandfather. And now, therefore, I, Sam Scafidi, mayor of the city of Twinsburg, express my congratulations to Thomas Simichek on achieving the prestigious and honorable rank of Eagle Scout. I further congratulate his family, friends, and fellow scouts as they gather to commemorate this special occasion. In witness thereof, I have hereunto subscribed my name and caused my official seal to be affixed this 27th day of June, 2023. Thomas, congratulations. Very good. Very good. Very good. I saw your. Hey. <laughs> I just want to say that these guys really have, uh, when you, th there's a lot to read there, and, and rightfully so. Their accomplishments have been really great. And uh, it's nice to be able to stand up here and present these guys with these awards for all that they've done and all the accomplishments that, they, uh, that they've achieved. And I only know I'd love to see what they do in the future and where they're going from here. So let's give all these guys a really good, nice of applause. <laughs> Thank you to all the scout leaders and family and friends that, that support these guys, too. I know that it's a lot. I recall the days way back when, when I was a scout. That took a lot of my family's part as well. So, um, yeah. So, that's it. Congratulations to all of you as well. Can I take a two-minute break? Yeah, so, uh, to echo Mr. Scafidi's sentiments, congratulations. Um, the list of the resumes of these five individuals this evening, um, I, I don't know if I've ever felt worse about myself and <laughs> how little I've accomplished. I, uh, congratulations, gentlemen. Truly fine work. I want to take just a quick five minute recess if folks and family want to take pictures. Um, uh, Mark can take a couple of pictures even. Uh, and we'll reconvene here at uh, 8 30 to conduct the fun part of this meeting, which, uh, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, you don't have to stay for because that's all the, uh, the business part. So I will take five minutes and uh, reconvene at 8 30. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you to those of you that chose to stay and those of you watching at home. It's 8.30 and we are reconvening after uh, quite an impressive uh, Eagle Scout presentation here this evening. Um, do we have any other 
awards or presentations, Mrs. Collins? There is none. All right, that moves us along to audience participation. First, we have Chuck Bonacci. All right, good evening, Mr. Bonacci. Good evening, Council, Mayor, Law Director, Ms. Conway, Ms. Collins. My name is Chuck Bonacci. I live at 11327 Heritage Drive in Twinsburg, Ohio. Here to talk about the recent document shredding event that was held this past Saturday at Public Works. We collected about 5,000 pounds of material. That equals 70 trees worth of wood. Okay. 70 trees worth of wood not going to a landfill. Going to be recycled in other paper and cardboard products. Events like this shredding event just don't happen. That being said, there's a bunch of planning and collaboration to make those kind of things happen. I'd like to thank the other commission members. You know, I get to come up here and talk about it, but there's other folks on the commission that plan and help. In addition to us planning, advertising, promoting the event, there's members and employees of the city that help us. And we touched multiple departments to uh, make that event happen and it would be a shame not to recognize uh, you know the service department that worked hands-on at the event but also the recreation department and the communication department that helped us develop the flyer and promote things uh, to the community realizing that some residents were not able to make it on saturday for the document shredding i think it's smart to share where other events like that are taking place so summit reworks that's a major entity in our region, takes care of a lot of environmental kind of things. Summit Reworks is hosting a shredding event on July 8th in Longwood Park. That's 1566 East Aurora Road in Macedonia. Summit Reworks does a lot of collecting of different kinds of waste. That event in, at Longwood Park in Macedonia is just a shredding event. I bring that up because they also do a collection on Thursdays of other materials. So July 8th, Longwood Park, Macedonia, document shredding from 9 a.m. to noon. That's all I have, but I, I really appreciate uh, the efforts of the different departments that helped us put that on. It's great when you see uh, residents that are excited about things and appreciative. The uh, folks from the service department and my commission elbows deep pulling stuff out of cars and getting into the shred bins Thankfully, we didn't run out of capacity this time because there's been times where we've turned folks away. Have a great evening. Thank you, Chuck. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, Chuck. Thanks, Thanks for all your help with that. Ken, <clears throat> do we have anyone else? We do. Matt Eppley. Good evening, Mr. Eppley. Matt Eppley, 2668 Old Mill Road, Twinsburg Township, Ohio. Um, Mayor, Council, and staff, thank you very much for the presentation of the Scouts. Scott, as you mentioned maybe 20 minutes ago, be careful for what you wish for because us Eagle Scouts become a thorn in your side from time to time about certain subjects. Thank you for the civics class for the Scouts during, this, during the caucus meeting this evening. They learned quite a bit and they were talking about it and they're still talking about things out there. Um, Mr. Deeds, with regards to the blood drive for the Red Cross, it's 16 years old with parents' permission. You have to be 18, but you can be 16 and donate, just so you're aware. You. Um, you're welcome. Um, hearing through the uh, um, caucus meeting, your infrastructure updates and improvements, that's a great thing to hear and see because that's a sign of city operation that's investing in the future. Um, there's quite a few cities out there that don't have the ability to invest in their infrastructure, and they're, you know, unfortunately suffering because of that. Um, the zoning map on the wall behind Mr. Scafidi and Mr. Manzana, thank you very much for putting that up there. Um, during our foray with regards to uh, uh, Project Gumbo, I asked for that, and I'm glad to see that that happened up there. Pointing out on Old Mill, one of two locations in the city where an I-2 and an R-2 district, an industrial district and a residential district would be neighbors next door to each other. There's only one other location on that map where that happens on Ravenna Road. That's why we're so passionate about Project Gumbo and everything going on with it. It's not that we're back-to-back -back neighbors. It's not that it's a corner lot and it's side to side. It's directly next to each other, side to side. Um, also, if old, I know there's a lot of legal stuff going on. If Old Mills Gumbo or any other project goes onto that site now that it's been two and a 
half years since the trees have been cut down, the vegetation's been going, growing back, the trees are coming back, the habitat's redeveloping. Can it please go through the proper environmental commission channels before everything gets started? I would greatly appreciate that as a scout, as an environmentalist, to make sure that follows the proper channel, the do that we didn't get the first time. Thank you very much for your time, and have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. That's all we have this evening. Right. Okay, moving along. Council communication and committee reports. Mr. Deeds, would you be kind enough to start us off this evening? I would. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, let's see. To start with there. Are, um, there's nothing on the board of zoning appeals this uh, this month, so uh, that meeting for tomorrow has been canceled. I did participate in this evening's finance committee meeting. Um, I mentioned earlier that the um, American Red Cross has reached out for the uh, for the blood drive. Um, Hilton Garden Inn tomorrow from seven to seven. Just go on redcross.org, put in your zip code, and uh, and you can sign up. If you can't go tomorrow, there's an event at the Stowe Library on Thursday, in the Twinsburg branch of the Cleveland Clinic on Friday. So I think those are all. Um, you know, it's just uh, it's just something I would consider if you're if you're healthy um, and can do it I, I would encourage you to do so um, because it really does pay forward and it truly is a gift of life um, with that um, lastly I would say I, I met two weeks ago with township manager Rob Kagler regarding um, the township's plans to um, to rework uh, I guess that's the best way I could say it. Um, Town Square, um, and it was true. It was just a it was just a meet and greet. Didn't didn't talk a lot about the plans. Didn't talk a lot about um, what they're looking to do. They're, they don't. Nothing's in concrete at this point in time. Just wanted to have a meet and greet, get to know each other a little bit. So when things are going to happen, or as that preparation comes along, um, we can at least get the dialogue going. So um, truly, just had a. You know, a half hour, 45 minute meet and greet, talk a little bit, and um, I think it'll be productive down the road. And that's all I have this evening. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Deeds. Appreciate it. Ms. Walker, please. Okay, I have a question for you, Mr. Deeds. Um, did you talk to him about if you want to sell the property to the city of Twinsburg? No. Okay. No, ne never went there. Okay, all right. <laughs> Just one. I did find something out interesting, though, that I didn't know. I, I, I didn't real. I knew that the, that the city didn't own the square, but I didn't know that the parking lot on the north side across the street was also owned by the township. Mm -hmm. the, 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 but the, you know where Teresa's Pizza was and mm -hmm. those other, the other buildings. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that that was uh, that was owned by the township. I know. I was today years old when I found that out. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> That is, yeah, I had no idea. That's pretty cool. So, thank you. Yeah, thank but you. that might be another conversation. Conversation <laughs> another day. Well, Mrs. Walker, what uh, would you like to share with us this evening? Okay, what do I have to share? Okay, uh, I did attend the finance meeting today, and uh, none of my committees have met so far. And I did uh, attend the Parks and Rec Committee for uh, Karen Labby, who's in. Italy right now, and uh, due to uh, a lack of quorum, there was no meeting. That's all I have to report. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Walker. Uh, Mr. Post, good evening. Good evening. Thank you. I uh, did attend the finance meeting. Uh, I think that will be spoken upon. Uh, I do want to talk about the planning commission that was last night. Uh, there will be four motions that I'll be making later at the end of the evening, but uh, let me tell you about the for uh, four motions. The first one I'll be doing <clears throat> is a conditional use permit uh, for outdoor dining. Burgers to Beer would like to construct an outdoor dining area at the front of the existing restaurant. Section 1151.05 uh, requires a conditional use permit for this outdoor use. Adjacent property owners were notified as required. A public hearing will be held and plans reviewed at the 626 uh, this last night uh, meeting. This application has been forwarded to the council in anticipation of a recommendation for approval of the project by the Planning Commission. Building permits are ready for release and the applicant would like to begin construction as soon as possible. 
Uh, it was unanimously recommended for approval by the Planning Commission last night. Uh, there were no comments from the public, so uh, that's that. Uh, the landscape and lighting plans were also accepted. Second, I'll be making a motion for an outdoor storage and self-service self -service storage facility. Uh, this applicant is proposing a relocation business with outdoor storage and self-service storage facilities at a Dutton Drive location in the Heritage Industrial Park. Section 115105 requires a conditional use permit for these outdoor uses. Uh, adjacent property owners were notified as required, and uh, last night uh, there was a public hearing held, and people could speak on that if they had the desire. The application has been forwarded to us uh, in anticipation of a recommendation for approval of proposed uses. This potential recommendation is not an approval of a specific site plan. Right? Uh, the request was unanimously approved last night by the Planning Commission. Uh, the public hearing was held. No comments from the public were provided. Okay. There are two conditional uses requested. One is an outdoor storage and two is self-service storage. I know Mayor Scafidi brought up last night that he wants to make sure that there is uh, enough landscape buffer uh, and that will be happening as well for the residents that are close. Okay, so no <coughs> concern about that. Uh, third, uh, I'll be making a motion for a site plan, uh, a building addition parking lot, uh, a building addition and parking lot are proposed at 2066 Case Parkway South. It is anticipated that uh, it is it is anticipated that the site plan approval will be recommend, recommended for this project with conditions related to final engineering approval of stormwater management features. A recommendation from the commission at their uh, meeting last night uh, must be confirmed by council this evening. A building permit shall not be issued until such plans are approved by the Planning Commission and then confirmed tonight by us here at Council. Uh, Planning Commission did unanimous, unanimously approve the site plan uh, last night. Uh, they, uh, their only concerns were that an ADA space must be added and final approval, approval pursuant to uh, City Engineer Review. That one there, no, so that's that. Okay. And then uh, lastly, I'll make a site plan. Uh, for the Paul Mitchell School. They are staying here in Twinsburg, which is great. Uh, I know the city worked very hard to keep them uh, here in town. They're going to be moving over to uh, Edison Boulevard. So a parking lot expansion has been proposed at the Edison Boulevard there. It is anticipated that the site plan approval will be recommended for this project with conditions related to final engineering approval of stormwater management features. A recommendation uh, from the Planning Commission last night must be confirmed by City Council this evening. A building permit shall not be issued until such plans are approved uh, by planning and then confirmed by us this evening. Uh, the site plan was unanimously approved by Planning Commission last night. Uh, they need to remove the concept plan label for, uh, for submittal. Uh, final submittal of stormwater calculation, SWPPP and stormwater management plan for review and approval by the city engineer must also take place and three conditions uh, conditions report for existing stormwater sewer must be submitted for engineering review so those are the four motions i will be making and um, we will vote on those at the end of the meeting and that's all i have thank, thank you. you mr post appreciate it well mr Bazana, as we have done this in the past the ask tonight with Mr. Post motions is simply for council's affirmation of the recommendations passed at last night's meeting, correct, sir? That's correct. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, that moves us along, Mr. Bell. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, I attended this evening's finance committee meeting. I'll defer to Mr. Fury for that. Uh, next meeting, the finance committee will be on Tuesday, August 22nd, 6 p.m. here in council chambers. Next meeting of the safety committee will be on July 11th at 6 p.m. here in council chambers. And the next meeting of the Public Works will be on Tuesday, October 10th, 6 p.m. here in Council Chambers. The work on the zoning code update continues. The zoning code working group met on June 21st. Uh, I will defer to Ms. Ziegler for, uh, for some additional information there. Uh, if you are looking for the latest and greatest about the zoning code update, go to togethertwinsburg.com and scroll to the featured project section. Nothing further this evening. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Bell. <coughs> Mr. Fierro, good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Earlier this evening, um, we had a finance committee meeting. Items for discussion were a, a monthly income tax report change. 
typically in the past the uh, finance director would just give us the the, the number of collect uh, the amount collected, and uh, uh, Mrs. Conway has recommended that we break it down into a different group that she would like us to see. Eighty-three percent of the revenue generated for the general fund comes from income tax, and it funds fifty-four percent of the city's overall revenue. So. We're looking at ways to better report that and, and make it more comprehensive. Uh, we also had discussion about multiple house bills and how they may or may not uh, help or hinder the tax collections of the city. And uh, we also talked about new reporting uh, that, uh, that would be available with Rita. Uh, statement of cash is on the city's website, which is our snapshot of our current finances. The uh, May close had a uh, general fund beginning balance of 15.8 million. We're currently looking at a 17.5 million dollar ending balance. Cash on hand is 39 million dollars, and that's all I have this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fury. Uh, in the interest of time, I'll be brief. I was at this evening's finance committee meeting, of which Mr. Fury just reported. Uh, so nothing further from me. That moves us along to our mayor's report. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Barr. Yeah, a couple quick things. Um, first of all, on the 15th of this month, we had a swearing in of a new officer, of a new police officer. And again, it's always my honor to do that. Uh, this young man came to us. Um, um, he went through the academy already. And he, uh, I'm telling you, he was very, he was a surprise. He came here and very mature. And I, I think that this, this gentleman's going to be a really good addition to our police department and to the patrol unit. Uh, but uh, his family joined him and uh, it was a very good swearing in. So we took care of that. And I just want to congratulate uh, Joseph again for uh, Joseph Neeland for coming on board. Um, on the 21st, I attended, there was a senior board, our senior board, they had a picnic fundraiser for uh, the Alzheimer's. And so um, I believe, Bill, you were there with us last year. Last year I was. Yeah, you were there last year. Um, and it was the same thing. It was mm -hmm. very nice. They raised money for Alzheimer's Association. And uh, it's, it's again, they, they, they feed you. They give you there's hamburgers and hot dogs. And all the seniors did a really great job. And everybody that put that together. So it was a nice event. Um, and then last week we had our employees appreciation lunch that we have annually every year. Uh, I believe Mr. Post was there. And uh, that turned out very nice too. A lot of work done by uh, our HR department from uh, Tammy uh, Kalal. She did a really good job of putting that together, and everybody else that joins in. Shannon always does a lot of work for those as well. So I believe that the uh, the uh, our, our employees appreciated that, and we certainly appreciate them. And that's why we do that every year. I did attend the Shred event last Friday. I got there uh, just about before they were ready to close, but I did get over there, and uh, I was. Glad to be able to talk with Chuck there, and he gave me the numbers. And actually, that day I was running back and forth between home and city hall. So throughout the, the morning, and I got to see the line, the cars that were there, and I, I knew that uh, it was going to be a big event and big numbers coming out of that. So that was nice as well. And I just have one last thing in the uh, in the keep time under uh, being here too long. Um, First Energy is offering an appliance recycling rebate program for our residents. I got uh, a notification from them. Um, for com residential and commercial customers to help save ed energy and reduce bills. Um, it's an appliance recycling program. And they'll provide an opportunity for residential customers to earn $75 for uh, recycling old and working refrigerators or freezers. Um, if they also have a, a, an old uh, working humidifier or air conditioner or a mini refrigerator, they throw that in with a large appliance, they'll get $100 for that. And uh, they're looking to get rebates for anybody that goes out and purchases um, any, any of the Energy Star certified appliances. Uh, as long as they're notified, um, you'll get uh, a rebate on that well. Uh, as well, just to try to keep some of these electric rates down, they're trying to offer some of these incentives for everybody, so it's going to save energy, but also maybe put a few dollars in their pocket. If anybody wants any more details on that program, it's uh, uh, energysaveohio.com. You go on there, and it'll really explain in detail uh, that program. So instead of just getting rid of your old appliances, you make a few dollars on it, and uh, it'll help out. Other than that, that's what I have tonight. Uh, that's it for my report. Thank you. Thank you, man. We do have a few department heads here tonight. Um, we will start out and welcome back our uh, our uh, Ever Becca Ziegler uh, back from maternity leave. She we've missed her. It's uh, nice to have her back in the office. 
and it sure takes a lot of pressure off the rest of us. So thank you and welcome. <laughs> thank you. Thank welcome you. Back. Good evening. Thank you. I'm back. Thank you. Um, so I'm getting up to speed on everything, but wanted to just say that I'm back and I'm here to answer questions. Uh, quick update on the zoning code. Um, we the survey had closed back in April. Uh, we had 150 responses. I don't know if you if I might be reiterating some of this. Um, so those uh, surveys are now being collated, and that information will be disseminated and put on the Together Twinsburg page for residents to see. Um, the working group um, did meet uh, June 22nd or June 21st. They went over the diagnostics report, which is essentially zone code. The consultant put together, um, reviewed our current code, um, our plans, all of our data, our reports, um, and kind of found areas of opportunity. Um, he created a 28 page document, which is great, but also I requested a shorter um, excerpt that would be a little bit more digestible for the general layperson. So a six page document will be accompanying that as well. That will be on Together Twinsburg tomorrow. I just got the email today. So um, that will be going in. Um, lastly, and probably most importantly, our first public um, open house will be held on Monday, July 17th from 5.30 to 7.30. We are working on a child care component as well for our residents, so you can, um, you can come. It's gonna be, stations are gonna be set up. Uh, there'll be a 10 minute presentation in the beginning, but other than that, more of an open house feel. Um, again, the um, 17th, Monday, um, here in council chambers, 5.30 to 7.30. So if you have any other questions, you just let me know. You know where to find me. I'm back. I, I do, if I can. Mr. President, where did yeah. that resident get the idea that this meeting was at 4 o'clock? I don't know. I don't. Did you? Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know where that came from because I it, it wasn't at 4 o'clock. No. It was no. at 5.30, It's right? at 5.30 to 7.30. That's the open yeah. house for the residents to come. And, exactly. And, yeah, it's not at 4 o'clock. And discuss your second shift, in which case. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Second shift. No, I mean the the, the working group meeting was at eleven. The working group meeting was at four thirty, but that one that was just for the working group. Yeah, so that's I, just I for all, all all of our public. This and the is our first. Just the working group. That's not. That's Correct. not for the residents. Correct. And Correct. Correct. That's I think he's a little confused. So. I think so as well. Yeah, yeah. it is at yeah. five thirty. Five thirty to seven thirty. Yep. I appreciate you touching on that. Yep. And again, five thirty to seven thirty. I think that's a wonderful time for again most people to attend. So exactly. Okay. Great. Well, thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you, Rebecca. Good to see you. Next, we have Parks and Recreation, Jennifer Benson. This is Benson. Good evening. Good evening. I'll be really brief, I promise. So I just want to touch on the three events we've got going on. June 30th, we have the Pops and Fireworks. Tickets are still available, so please go to rocktheparkconcert.com and get those. Family Fun Day is going to be a new event for us this year. It's at the Fitness Center. It is on June or July 22nd from 10 to 1. It will be all focused on family, wellness, health components. There'll be obstacle courses, challenges, fitness classes that are for all ages. So Jacob's done a really good job putting all of that together for us. Um, community Day at the Akron Rubber Ducks on August 6th. Go to our website to get the information for those tickets. They're $12. Kids are going to run the bases. The mascot will come and visit them. They'll get a uh, meet and greet with the players. Um, and then September 16th, most importantly, our senior center will be celebrating their 20th anniversary. This will be a community open house for everyone. Um, she'll have games. She'll have food. You know, Laura, she always blows everything out of the park. What was the date the for the senior open house? September 16th. So, and then just moving on from events, just really quick, doing a couple of um, housekeeping issues in our department. Pickleball courts, they were supposed to start striping those this week. Mother Nature is holding that off a bit, but they think they'll have it done by next week. Um, so those will be fully open and ready to use by the pickleball players. Um, Safety Town, Safety Park has been, the asphalt has been poured. We are now gonna be moving on to the striping component. This will not open until summer of next year, by the time we get all of the components in place. But we did move it to Glen Chamber or to Glen Meadow Park so that it is more accessible for all residents, not just for the Safety Town program. Um, one thing we do want the residents to know is that Glen Chamberlain Park will shut down after Labor Day because we will be starting demolition of that playground and the restrooms and then other components of that park in order to start our upgrades. The restroom is being replaced, playground is being done, and then there's some ADA compliance work that's going to be done. So we will be completely closing that park from September until June of next year. We're hoping to have everything up and running for a June concert season, but we won't. 
we won't hold anybody to that. <laughs> so, and then last um, council meeting, I wasn't here, but I did know that there was a conversation about playgrounds. So I just want to touch on that briefly. We are putting a plan in place to address all of the playgrounds in the city. As we know, we put a lot of things in and we don't have a plan to maintain them years down the road. We don't want to do that again. So we are putting a plan in place that will replace all of our parks over the course of seven to nine years. Cannot happen all at once. Budget-wise, it, it, it just is not responsible for us to do that. So, um, the service director and I will put a plan in place, and we've already started, that will send to our capital budgets not only complete replacement of one to two parks per year, depending on their cost, but it will also allow him to budget repair and maintenance money for the current parks that we can get parts for, and then for the parks we are putting in. Glen Chamberlain will be the flagship park. All of these parks will mimic each other so that we don't need 18 different slides, we don't need 18 different rope courses. They're all going to have the same components of some type. And they will all be accessible for all levels of physical fitness. So that's kind of where we're at right that. Any questions? A couple weeks ago there was a resident that brought that up, wasn't it? Wasn't a yes. In conversation, it was a resident that brought it up, wasn't it? The parks. Um, is it possible that we can, uh, email or someone get the address of that person, get the email, just an email to let them know that there is kind of just just as a follow up since you came in and spoke to us, that we could communicate back and let them know that. Yeah, and we will put this on together, Twinsburg, as soon as we get everything in place. We've given a preliminary plan to the mayor, but Ski and I need to go over some final things, and then we will be giving it to Ms. Conway once budgets start rolling through. So, awesome. Anything else? Thank you for that. All right. Thank you, John. That was short. Thank you. Next, we have um, our <laughs> Tam Kalel, our human resource director. Good evening, Tammy. Good evening. I will keep this really short. I just wanted to give an update on hiring. We did have our civil service testing last Sunday for police. We had about 20 applicants, 12 showed up. Out of those 12, nine are moving forward in the process. Um, we think we had some really strong candidates among those nine, so we're really hopeful about the um, candidates that will be able to move forward. We have dispatch still posted. Um, encourage people to check out the posting and to apply, and there's information on how to take the test for that. And then we will be posting fire soon. Um, a couple of other job postings of note would also be the full-time lifeguard position. Um, great way to get benefits and a full-time job. So, and there's still some seasonal and part-time positions posted. And um, I just want to follow up on what the mayor said about employee appreciation. It's a really nice event, great way to recognize our hardworking employees. Um, thank you to the mayor for supporting that. Um, thank you, Councilman Post, for stopping by. And the committee was just amazing. So many thanks to the Employee Appreciation Committee for all their work. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Thank, Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, we appreciate it. Uh, next, we have Chief Mason. Good evening, Chief. How are we doing? Yeah. So before I start, I just want to say uh, thanks to Council. Thank you, especially to the Mayor, for your understanding. Um, last several weeks, month or two, you know, I've been notably absent. Or maybe you didn't notice, but I wasn't here. Um, <laughs> it was my uh, my twins' senior year, and there was a lot going on. They're both student athletes. A lot going on in the spring, so it was important to me. Um, so I appreciate that. So I will keep this brief as well. Uh, jumping into the month of May, we had a total of two thousand seven hundred and forty-four calls for service. Brings our total year to date of fourteen thousand one hundred and eighty. Just some calls of notes and numbers of notes. Uh, 13 of these uh, incidents, arrests, and citations were related to possession of drugs or drug-related offenses. There was one incident of domestic violence, 11 for driving under suspension or without a valid license, three for operating a vehicle under the influence of alcohol and or drugs. There were two failure to comply with a police order or fleeing, uh, 11 warrant arrests. Uh, in total, there was... 100, there are other miscellaneous offenses as well. In total, there was 194 traffic stops. Uh, we had a total of 80 different people either cite, cited or arrested on a total of 108 different counts. 
As far as traffic crashes go, we had a total of 24 crashes for the month, 19 of which were non-injury, <coughs> five of which were injury, uh, three were on private property, and I'm happy to report none were fatal. Just got a couple miscellaneous notes. Um, one thing I wanted to point out was last month was when we had the, um, the I don't know what we're referring to, when, when, when the computers were, we were shut down oh, for a, cyber a brief time, the cyber, cyber attack. So uh, during that time, it's, it's, it, particularly, it affects us particularly hard because every single call that comes into the city for police or fire is generated, generates a number. Um, a CAD number, and then the dispatchers add notes. They put the reporting people in, their information, the address, all that stuff. So when it goes down, it's a lot of uh, manual type, you know, typing into notes in the computer, um, laptops, a lot of penmanship. There's a lot that goes into it. So once we finally came back online, I uh, wanted to give a special thanks to our dispatch center and our staff, and particularly Patty Detling, Ron Good, and Sharon Vasikinen. They went above and beyond in getting the department back on track within two days of having our system back online from the network shutdown. So they had the task of entering over seven days of activity for the police and fire department into the CAD database. They got it done within two days. So really, really impressive. Um, the whole dispatch center did really well, you know, those individuals in particular. Uh, our new officer, which the mayor had touched on, and our test on Sunday, which Tammy had touched on. You know, unfortunately, the numbers are low. That's the case across the country. Um, you know, we're no different than any other agency. Uh, I do want to say that out of those nine candidates we ended up with, it does look like some quality individuals. So, fingers crossed. That's all I have. Thanks, Chief. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Um, finally, we have uh, Christina Conway. Do you have anything else to add for the, the residents that you want to say? As we had a finance committee meeting tonight, I have nothing to add. Very good. That's it. Thank you. All right. That concludes our department head reports. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, department heads. And I appreciate everyone's patience uh, this evening. I know we got started a little late. <laughs> Chief Morgan, you're not reporting this evening, correct? Thanks. <clears throat> All right. That moves us along to legislation. We're going to start this evening with Ordinance 60 2023. An ordinance amending Section 1148 and 1151 of the Twinsburg Zoning and Development Regulations setting forth the permitted uses in the C5 Residence Business District. All right, at this time I'd like to make a motion to adopt Ordinance 60 2023. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Deeds seconds. Is there any further discussion? All right, Shannon, please call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Deeds? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Post? Excuse me. He's decidedly absent at the moment. He'll be back. He's at the airport. <laughs> Do we... We skip him. Skip him? Wait yep. him we'll Five minutes. Minutes. All right. All right. Uh, since Mr. Post is not here, uh, the ordinance, ordinance 60 2023 uh, passes five to zero. Moving along to Ordinance 68, 2023. An ordinance adopting the tax budget for the, of the City of Twinsburg, Ohio, for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2024, and submitting the same to the County Auditor. Our Ordinance 68, 2023 now stands on its second reading. Ordinance 72, 2023. An ordinance declaring the official intent and reasonable expectation of the City of Twinsburg on behalf of the State of Ohio to reimburse its general sewer and or SCMR fund for the Ravenna Sanitary Sewer Replacement Project with proceeds of tax-exempt debt of the State of Ohio. At this time, I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules. When, and no? declaring an emergency. Okay, Sorry. thank you, Mrs. Stahl. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules and place Ordinance 72, 2023 on its third and final reading. May I have a second? No second. Mr. Fury seconds. Any discussion? Shannon, please call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Deeds? Yes. Mr. Post? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Our suspension of the three reading rule passes six to zero. Now I'd like to make a motion to adopt Ordinance 72, 2023 as an emergency. May I have a second? Second. All right, Mrs. Walker seconds. Any additional discussion? Shannon, please call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Mr. Deeds? Yes. Mr. Post? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Or an ordinance 72 2023 uh, passes as an emergency <clears throat> six to zero. Moving along to Ordinance 73 2023. An ordinance amending section 743.05, chapter 
of Chapter 743, Mobile Food Vehicle Regulations of the Business Regulations Code regarding location of operation and parking for mobile food vehicles. All right, Ordinance 73, 2023 now stands on its second reading. Moving along to Ordinance 77, 2023. An ordinance submitting to the electors of Twinsburg a proposal by the Twinsburg Charter Review Commission to amend sections 3.02, 4.04, 6.03, 7.01, 7.04A, 7.05, 7 7.05, 7 7.08, 7.09, 7.10, 7.11, 7A.04, and 12.04 of the Twinsburg Charter. All right, thank you. Ordinance 77 2023 now stands on its second reading. Um, we can discuss that further. Mr. Vizana gave us a nice primer on that earlier this evening. We will be uh, asking council to vote on that at the next meeting, which is July 11th. Moving on to Ordinance 78, 2023. An ordinance authorizing the city engineer to prepare and submit an application to participate in the Ohio Public Works Commission State Capital Improvement Program and to execute contracts as required for the Ethan Screen Sewer Outfall Lining Project and declaring an emergency. All right, at this time, I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules and place Ordinance 78 2023 on its third and final reading. May I have a second? No second. Mr. Fury seconds. Any discussion? Shannon, please call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Post? Yes. Mr. Dietz? Yes. Right, suspension of the three reading rule passes six to zero. And at this time, I'd like to make a motion to adopt Ordinance 78 2023 as emergency. May I have a second? Second. Mrs. Walker seconds. Any additional discussion regarding 78-2023? Hearing none, Shannon, please call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Deeds? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Post? Yes. All right, Ordinance 78-2023 passes as an emergency 6-0. Moving along to Ordinance 79, 2023. An ordinance authorizing the city engineer to prepare and submit an application to participate in the Ohio Public Works Commission State Capital Improvement Program and to execute contracts as required for the Tinkers Creek Interceptor Sewer Project and declaring an emergency. At this time, I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules. Place Ordinance 79, 2023 on its third and final reading. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Deeds seconds. Any discussion? Shannon, please call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Deeds? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Mr. Post? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Suspension of the re three reading rule passes six to zero. At this time, I'd like to make a motion to adopt Ordinance 79-2023 as an emergency. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Deeds seconds. Any additional discussion on 79-2023? Hearing none, Shannon, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Deeds? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Post. Yes. Ordinance 79, 2023 passes as an emergency 6-0. Moving along to Ordinance 80, 2023. An ordinance authorizing the city engineer to prepare and submit an application to participate in the Ohio Public Works Commission State Capital Improvement Program and to execute contracts as required for the Bank Stabilization and Sanitary Sewer Project and declaring an emergency. All right, at this time, I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules and place Ordinance 80, 2023 on its third and final reading. May I have a second? A second. Mr. Fury seconds. Any discussion? Shannon, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Post? Yes. Mr. Deeds? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. The suspension of the three reading rule passes six to zero. Now I'd like to make a motion to adopt Ordinance 80 2023 <coughs> as an emergency. May I have a second? Second. I'll second. I'll yield. Mr. Post seconds. Any additional discussion on 80-2023? Hearing none, Shannon, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Post? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Deeds? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. All right, Ordinance 80-2023 passes as an emergency 6-0. Moving along to Ordinance 81, 2023. An ordinance authorizing the city engineer to prepare and submit an application to participate in the Ohio Public Works Commission LTIP grant program for the Ravenna Shepherd Richmond Broadway intersection improvement project and to execute contracts as required for the same and declaring an emergency. At this time, I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules and place <laughs> Ordinance 81, 2023 on its third and final reading. May I have a second? Second. second. Yield. Mrs. Walker seconds. Any discussion? Shannon, please call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Deeds? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Post? Yes. 
Right, suspension of the three reading rule passes six to zero. Now at this time, I'd like to make a motion to adopt ordinance 81-2023 as emergency. May I have a second? A second. Mr. Fury seconds. <laughs> Any additional discussion on 81-2023? Shannon, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Post? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Mr. Deeds? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Ordinance 81-2023 passes as an emergency six to zero. Moving along to Ordinance 82, 2023. An ordinance accepting the dedication of a right-of-way donation unto the city of Twinsburg, Ohio, from the lot consolidation for 9184 Darrow Road. All right, Ordinance 82, 2023 now stands on its first reading. Uh, ordinance 83, 2023. An ordinance accepting the findings and recommendations of the fact finder and State Employment Relations Board case number 2022 MED 091069 Ohio Patrolman Benevolence Association full-time dispatchers and declaring an emergency. All right, at this time I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules and place ordinance 83 2023 on its third and final reading. We have a second. Second. Mr. Bellin seconds. Any there. discussion on ordinance 83 and the emergency clause? All right. Um, the reason we want to get this passed as Mr. Vizana stated earlier, is that we have seven days to uh, either accept or reject the findings of the fact finder. Um, in, the, in the interest of saying this one time instead of during the, the next phase of this, um, I will say that the city followed a very uh, outlined process that is very specifically defined by the State Employee Relations Board. You may have heard it to it referred as SERB. Uh, as the negotiations process moves along, uh, oftentimes uh, these disagreements uh, over union language and contract language uh, go to an independent third party fact finder. Uh, in this case, the city was fortunate enough uh, to uh, have a fact finder who was also a law professor. And this law professor uh, found that the offers being presented to our dispatcher's unit uh, were fair and equitable in nature and the uh, <clears throat> findings that came out of this meeting um, proved to be not only favorable for the city and the administration and the taxpayers, but for our dispatching staff and public uh, telecommunications folks as well. So uh, that being said, I think that uh, council uh, this evening, I'd like to ask that we, uh, we pass this on an emergency uh, so that we uh, basically agree with the findings uh, of the fact finder uh, from uh, from our conversations. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to add? Well said. Thank you. All right. So hearing no further discussion, Shannon, would you please call the roll on the emergency? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Post? Yes. Mr. Deeds? Yes. All right. So suspension of the three reading rule passes six to zero. At this time, I'd like to make a motion to adopt Ordinance 83-2023 as emergency. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Bell and seconds. Anyone have anything else they would like to add about uh, Ordinance 83-2023? I would just like to thank everybody involved uh, for following the process the way it needed to be followed. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Anyone else? All right. Uh, hearing no further discussion, Shannon, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Mr. Deeds? Yes. Mr. Post? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Ordinance 83-2023 passes as an emergency 6-0. to zero. <clears throat> That moves us along to unfinished business, new business, and miscellaneous. Mr. Bellin, do you have anything you'd like to add this evening? Uh, real quick, I will not be at our next council meeting on the 11th of July. I do look forward to seeing everybody on the 25th. Um, if I could ask one of my colleagues to um, fill in for me at the safety committee meeting on July 11th, I would appreciate it. Uh, well, I'll send you guys an email. I can do that. Thank you, Mr. Fury. I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> I would like to congratulate Logan, Logan, John, Benjamin, and Thomas on earning the prestigious rank of Eagle Scout this evening. And I hope everyone has a happy and safe Independence Day weekend. Nothing further. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Powell. Mr. Post, anything you'd like to add? Well, thank you. I have uh, a couple of comments, and then uh, I have four motions I'll make. Absolutely. Uh, first, uh, we had uh, someone speak tonight in opposition of the charter review. Um, it was disappointing to hear that. Um, it was disappointing even more so that we have 
uh, two residents now, two weeks in a row, speaking on their disappointment with the charter that they will be opposing these uh, recommend recommendations for changes. Uh, what's even more disappointing to me about that is that, as I even said two weeks ago, please call me if there are any questions. Yet, I got no calls, no emails. Has the city been called about that at all? Nope, nothing. Uh, all the meetings were open to the public. There was no public particip participation once. So it's discouraging to me that we have uh, people coming in week after week, uh, same people, uh, being negative about something that I think was very well done and our residents did an amazing job. So I'm hoping that they will reconsider their positions or simply call to find out why things were done the way they were. Uh, that being said, I also want to say that, uh, um, you know, I'll say we have, uh, it's been a long night, so another thing. So let's just go right to the motions. Um, let's go right to the motions. Um, I'd like to make a motion for the approval of a conditional use permit for outdoor dining at the Burgers to Beer location at 8941 Wilcox Drive and as recommended for approval by the Planning Commission at their June 26, 2023 meeting. Is there a second? A second. Can, can, I, can I have a, a, a question regarding this? During yeah. discussion. Okay. So, is there any discussion about this? <laughs> thank you, Mr. Yes. Thank you. Sorry for jumping the gun there. And, <laughs> and, and, this, and this didn't come up at caucus, and that's why I'm bringing it up now. Yes. As I was looking through this, it looks like the and, and I'm and I'm 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 100 for this. Okay. But the off street parking count seems like it's low for what it's supposed to be. When, when you read through the off street parking, when, yeah. When you when you read through the required number of parking spaces. They, there's 111 spaces that are provided, but per code, 137 are required. So does this have to come back for a variance if they don't have enough parking? How does that? I don't think this is actually disrupting any of the parking, is it? I, what? I don't believe it is. From where I was told that it is and what I saw, yeah. it's really not going into the parking lot. Um, it's a, actually it's at the side building. It's at the side of the building. No, it's no, I, I, I see that. But because because you're adding square footage, because they're adding square footage, it seems like there's. I didn't understand it quite honestly when I saw it. I'm I'm, I'm looking at this. All they're doing is putting in a patio. I know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't... Generally speaking, our, our planning staff would have. They would have picked up on that. Yeah, I mean, I think your question is, does requiring or does the addition of patio space require additional parking space? And I, I mean, I don't know off the top of my head, but I will say that that is one of the things the planning staff checks. And if it does, then they would recommend to the applicant, likely before they seek a conditional use permit, to go get a variance to those parking Right, and that's why I don't understand it. Well, but I, I mean, I, I don't think the planner's report indicated that did it the, it did that there was, that we needed a variance well it didn't say that it needed a variance but it says 111 spaces are provided and then it says 137 are required and in fact it underlines that so that's what i didn't understand so isn't this just for again an affirmation of the site plan not actually approval of work to be done that's correct yeah yeah that's correct i mean it's so, I mean, there's plenty of opportunity. The planning for us. commission approved it, and council's given the opportunity to confirm their approval. Mm -hmm. well, I, I wouldn't. Also, I guess what I'm getting is, I'd be surprised if the planning commission approved it. If here's, the, here's the front of the building right here. They didn't yeah, address that during the hearing. Right, right. that is going to be right here on the the front corner, corner. right? Uh, but you see, it's still within the. The, the building the that already is, well, yeah. none of, it doesn't affect any of the parking spaces. No, I, I, understand, I understand that completely. Yeah. I'm just saying it says right here that 111 parking spaces are provided, and then it says just below it, 137 oh. spaces are required. She was there. She it doesn't there. make sense. Okay. Uh, she I there. think if... Mr. Deeds, if you're reading the same thing from the planner's report, it says that that's based on one one parking space per seat, but then there's another part underneath that it's one parking space per two seats. Right, whichever is greater. 
So the greater, it's required off-street parking, I'll read the planner's report. Required mm -hmm. off-street parking for sit-down restaurant mm -hmm. lounge is 18 spaces per thousand square foot of gross floor area or one per two seats, whichever is greater. So the gross floor area is 7,625 square feet, which equals 137 off-street off parking spaces. And well, I'm not trying to be adversarial here. I'm just saying, can we approve this if it needs a variance? Well, there's a motion. I, I, I want, I I, want so to. There's a motion, there's a great motion on the floor. And I mean, certainly this is covered under discussion. Yeah. But my understanding is, again, that we are simply approving a site plan. This is not any sort of approval, issuance of permits, or anything like that. I mean, are, can we approve well, or affirm this this evening? Yes. I mean, I, I guess what I'm saying, Mr. Deeds, and you know, for the consideration of all councils, I'm not seeing anywhere in I'm looking at Lynn Muter's reports that they haven't met the requirements. I mean, I have here it says building permits are ready for release. The project was unanimously recommended for approval by the Planning Commission last night. Uh, public hearing was held. I'm not seeing anything in here that says they they needed to get a variance. To allow them to, they they wouldn't be able to get a building permit if they needed a variance i mean if they weren't conforming to the code well, i'm thinking because of the old built maybe there was a variance for the original for when damon's went up it was the, the same, same building, building. Same maybe but I, I mean i guess i'm just saying i i i like you rely on these reports from the staff members and the planning commission and that, i mean the planning commission's job is to re review whether or not those parking requirements are met as a part of the site plan review process or as a part of conditional use permit process. Could we approve the conditional use permit tonight though? Um, yeah. That they could, that they're okay to go forward with this, but we can review the, what would we be able to vote yes for that? Yeah, I mean, you could condition the approval on verifying that the parking lot requirements are met. Would do we need to be, amend? Do we need to amend the current? Yeah, motion? we'll have to amend this. So I'd like to amend yeah. this. Would that would that give you a, a better comfort level so on your on your concern without having to? Yeah, right. Hunt so it back or, two weeks. Or, either, yeah. either that or I'll vote no, and everyone else can vote yes. I don't care. I, I, <laughs> no, that's the right. I'd like to make a motion to amend like the current motion, and I'd like to. Do I say now what I want to amend it to? To include that confirmation that the parking is acceptable. Confirmation that the parking lot numbers are acceptable, are acceptable to, code. to code per the planning uh, department. May I have a second? May I have a second? I second. Mr. <laughs> second. Actually, I think I'll second. No, you know, you're doing a great job. I'll second, <laughs> I'll second what you just said. You can't second your own. I got no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Right. So, uh, so any discussion on the that, amendment. on the amendment? I find it really challenging to, to, that Lynn Muter would do a report and it would get through Mark Cohen with, with, with something that glaring. There, there's a fix there that we don't know. It's right here. It's here. It says, it says parking compliance for Damon's was determined according to the one space per two seat criteria with 263 seats. The additional language related to gross floor area was added to the zoning code at a later date. Okay. Yeah, we'll put it there. So, yeah. But, so, but it does, I, but I see what he's so saying where it says 111 and that down here. Is just, just, right. I'm just, in my opinion, so in my experience, that. we would not be making our, between our building department, mm -hmm. our, our, between Lynn and, and again, we have a very experienced planning commission. I can't imagine that that would go as an oversight. That would be one of the first things they check the box. And because of that, I'm going to vote for this amendment and then I'm going to vote for the motion. Thank you. All right. So we've had discussion. Any other further discussion? So you got you, you got the the amendments on the floor to be voted on. Right now we're voting on the amendment. If there's no yeah. further discussion, yeah, just the amendment. If there's no further discussion, we're going to vote on the amendment. Call the roll. Shannon, call the roll. Mr. Post. Yes. Mr. Fury. Yes. Mr. Barr. Yes. Mr. Deeds. Yes. Mrs. Walker. Yes. Mr. Bellin. Yes. All right, so the amendment to the motion passes six to zero. Now, Mr. Post, I believe you have a motion that you would like to pass as amended. Yes. So I'd like to uh, make a motion. Well, you already have a motion. Like, you'd like to. Boy, there's so much going on. Oh, you got me now. You'd like to 
You're simply asking Listen. counsel if there's any discussion on the amended motion. Yes. Okay. Is there any discussion on the amended motion? Oh, I'm, okay. I'm with you now. Hearing none. I'm with you now. Hearing none. Shannon Caldwell. Mr. Post. Thank you. Mr. Post. Yes. Mr. Fury. Yes. Mr. Deeds. Yes. Mrs. Walker. <laughs> yes. Mr. Bellin. Yes. Mr. Barr. Yes. This is amended this, motion. This is how we learn. Six to zero. This is how we learn. All right. All right. All right. I like to make a moving along. I like to make another motion. Hopefully, I'll do it right. I like to make a motion for the approval of a conditional use permit for self-service storage, self-service storage and outdoor storage located at uh, Permit Parcel Number Sixty Four Dash Zero Eight Four Five Five on Dutton Drive, and as recommended for approval by the Planning Commission at their June Twenty Six. 2023 meeting. Do I have a second? I'll second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, Shannon, call the roll. Mr. Post? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Deeds? Yes. Mr. Pellin? Yes. Mr. Barr? Yes. Gotcha. Thank you. Uh, motion uh, passes 6 nothing. Okay. Uh, next, I'd like to make a motion for the approval of a site plan for a building addition at the Wright and Howard uh, Decorating located at 2066 Case Parkway, and as recommend, recommended for approval by the Planning Commission at their June 26th, 2023 meeting. Do I have a second? I'll second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, Shannon, call the roll. Mr. Post? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Deeds? Yes. Okay, so the motion passes 6-0. I'd like to make a motion for the approval of a site plan for parking lot expansion at the Paul Mitchell School, located at 2033 Edison Boulevard and as recommended for approval by the Planning Commission at their June 26th, 2023 meeting. Is there a second? A second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? I, I would just like to uh, thank Mayor Scafidi and I'm assuming Rebecca for keeping this business in touch with me. I know that, I know that a lot of work went into that. So thank you. Lynn as well. Lynn helped, Lynn. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, she did a lot. I Great second that. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Shannon called the roll. Mr. Post? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Deeds? Yes. Mr. Barr? Yes. And motion uh, passes 6-0. And uh, finally, I'd like to uh, thank you all for helping me through that. <laughs> but this is how we learn, right? Yes. This is how we learn. Sometimes mistakes are the best way to learn. With that, I have nothing further. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Post. And uh, honestly, to your credit, sir, it is, it's a difficult procedure to get your head around so you did a great job thank you for uh for making those motions this evening um mr fury do you have any new business unfinished business or miscellaneous nothing this evening thank you all right um mrs walker i have nothing thank you all right um mr deeds we are in touch base with you mr bellon uh no nothing further thank you all right um, i just like to wish everybody a uh, happy and healthy independence fit day and um <laughs> And I have nothing additional. Uh, Mr. Scafidi, anything this evening? One quick comment. Um, I want to thank Council for um, approving Ordinance 83 2023. That's okay. the um, accepting the findings of the uh, state uh, fact finder and state employment relations board. And I really want to thank um, Mr. Vizana, our law director, Tammy Collell, our HR director, our police chief, uh, Tom Mason, and uh, towards the end there, um, Christina Conway came in, our finance director, um, for the professional way that they handled it. Those were long meetings. Um, they came back and forth. We were all talking about it, but those those are the folks that sat there and, and went through this negotiation and, and got to where we were and handed us what I consider to be another successful um, part of the negotiation. And, uh, and I thank them for uh, having delivered that. Oh, yes, and, and Max. Um, the, our outside counsel that helped it. Yeah, he did a lot as well. So those were some uh, really long meetings, and I, I appreciate them and thank them for all that. So thank you, guys. Christy Yakupovich. Oh, Christy Yakupovich, right. And, right, in our dispatch center, right. The, the entire administration. I, Everybody that was involved in those meetings, yeah, they were long meetings. Uh, they went all day. So, yeah, it's a long day for them. We even had to send pizza in there, so. <laughs> they had to feed them. It was a long Anything day. Else? But thank you. No, that's all I have. All thank right. you. Uh, Mr. Vizan, anything you'd like to add this evening? No, sir. All right. Mrs. Collins? 
Mrs. Conway? I would be remiss if I didn't say this. Uh, they're both probably asleep, but happy birthday to my husband and happy birthday, first birthday to my daughter on Friday. Awesome. Happy birthday. Right. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. You know, it was Scott Barr's birthday yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I heard you sing happy birthday. Well, we should enough. sing to him. That's, that's yeah. enough. That's where you, it's getting late. All right, <clears throat> moving along. Um, we do have one uh, um, absent member this evening. Mrs. Labby was unable to attend. Yes. Uh, I'd like to uh, make a motion to excuse Mrs. Labby from this evening's meeting. May I have a second? Second. second. <laughs> Mrs. Walker seconds. Any discussion? Shannon, please call the roll. Mr. Farr? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Deeds? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. Mr. Post? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. All right, we can consider Mrs. Labby excused six to zero. Uh, finally, this evening, I'd like to make a motion uh, to enter into an executive session to consider the appointment, employment, or discipline of a public employee or official. May I have a second? No second. Mr. Fury seconds. Shannon, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Fury? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Post? Yes. Mr. Deeds? Yes. Mr. Bellin? Yes. The motion passes 6 to 0. We will report back on the executive session as concluded. Good night. Good night.